Hi there. Um, this is a quick introduction to the concept of controlled vocabularies, which you'll also read about in Bad Key Chapter um, 4. Um, this chapter gives you a pretty good explanation of the concept, so I'm not going to spend a great deal of time going over things, but I do want to stress some of the things that are involved with this chapter. Uh, first, uh, the fact is that the idea that I, one way I think of, I try to explain controlled vocabularies to students is I like to think of it as a kind of official vocabulary for the database. Um, this means that the words in the vocabulary um, come from professionals, writers, and researchers in the in the area. Um, they also come from information professionals like librarians, catalogers, indexers who put the database together. Um, because of this, it's really important actually to listen to and pay attention to the actual words and phrases that your professors or writers or experts use, because controlled vocabularies are taken from that concept from that kind of language. Badke I think gives a good il illustration of this on page 73. I'm just going to kind of visualize it here for you um, and, and, and step you through this real quick. Um, he talks about a good, he gives us a good example of uncontrolled vocabulary. Uh, you know about that really large city on the East Coast where the UN is, is located and you know the city that never sleeps, right? Now this city can be expressed as NY, NYC, New York, New York City, or the Big Apple. Now to keep this kind of confusion from happening, database programmers, catalogers, and indexers will pick just one form. Let's say New York City. And everything that has to do with that place will be categorized by that term. Now while this may not allow for great flexibility, it does allow for very consistent and very accurate searches. And now below is a link to a video on controlled vocabularies from the library at the uh, University of Washington. And this video does a really good job of explaining the concept and how it can help you in conducting searches in databases and library catalogs. Now actually a library catalog is simply a very specific kind of database. So the, the skills will transfer back and forth, no problem. Another point I would like to make uh, before I go is that no database will actually use the term controlled vocabulary. As users, this is a professional term, as users you will see this expressed differently and that will vary from database to database. Uh, here are some examples from uh, tools available through the library website. In Discovery, the, the library catalog, the controlled vocabulary entries will be found at the bottom of the page in the related subjects section. In Academic Search Premier, you'll find these under the phrase subject terms. In ERIC, an educational database, you'll find these terms in the thesaurus. And in the Web of Science, they're actually, they actually put the control vocabulary in two places. One on the search screen, you'll see it under topic, and in the actual records, you'll find the, them using the term descriptors. Now each, again, each database will use different terminology, but the function is always the same, and that is to allow users to consistently and accurately search for items in the database. Oftentimes, librarians will refer to this as subject searching, and once you get a hold of this and, and, and really learn to use it well, this will really, really help you in your research uh, and become a powerful tool. All right, one last thing. I want you to make sure to pay attention while you're watching the video to the ways in which you can use uh, subject terms and key terms or keywords together. Now, if you get this down to where you can use both, that's a really, really powerful and helpful combination.